you. Next speaker is Rulio Calades. I'm very embarrassed, Rulio, because what happened now just now is, you know, I proposed this presentation one by one, and I proposed in reverse order. So I proposed one from Daniel, because Daniel is speaking now. So come in on Spoglia, and uh, and uh, basically I will do it with a slide. So basically, Julio has been working for a number of years. I mean, it's already like almost, uh, I would say, at least six or seven years on a very important database on regulatory elements in bacterial, called Regulon DB. I mean, he works in Mexico, and the thing is, I don't have sent all of your geolink because of that. And uh, so you could tell me basically where you work in Mexico, or was it Mexico? Or Mexico, and then I did my uh, postdoc, my postdoc in, uh, in uh, MIT, in MIT, in Boston. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I mean, Julio's work, I mean, uh, has been very, I mean, important in understanding all of the inter I mean, the different subscription pathways in bacteria, starting first with E. coli, where most of the data was, but expanding to a large variety of bacteria. So, Julio, I mean, I'll let you. Mm -hmm. start Thank you. It will it will sound five minutes before. So um, for me it's really an honor, Amos and Rob, to be invited here for this uh, uh, very special and uh, very special conference. And uh, I also would say it's a uh, I've been very uh, happy and it's it's uh, it's a unique conference in the sense of the, the, the human uh, flavor and warm uh, uh, environment that, uh, that we have all I think felt through these days so um initially when I was you know uh, giving it the, the summary of my talk to Tanya I only thought about what talk about what we have done recently but then I realized in one of these uh, so the uh, ideas, as Emo said, uh, that maybe the best way to, to honor um, the 20 years of uh, Swissprot is to talk about, uh, I mean, give a summary of the history of Regulon DB, uh, which is the database on uh, that uh, we've been working in my lab since since time ago. So, um, so. <clears throat> so that's what I'll. Huh? Please switch it, please. Ah, see. So, um, a. Um, 1987, 89. I I uh, I did my uh, PhD uh, thesis on uh, the idea of combining grammatical uh, modeling of uh, of gene regulation. And in fact, it was a little bit later when I was uh, in uh, MIT that I got to get the the, the mathematical proof of this uh, idea. What you see here is uh, what are called. Just, uh, what are called uh, IJ dependency relationships, and in fact, these are long, um, long distance relationships that happen in, in natural language, where you have, you can have a noun, this is singular, and the verb is is far away. It can be really, I mean, in principle, at a very long distance, which is represented here, right? The, the man that said that was going to be here, but happened to be, uh, I don't know, sleeping in the beach, and that blah blah blah, is well, <laughs> sorry. Uh, is is uh, is whatever big word. So if you change a noun of uh, I mean a singular to to plural, of course you have to have the coordination of of the verb. And this is and this is a long term IG dependency relationship. So if you keep, so that means if you have if you make a change somewhere, you have to make a change 
at a distance so to keep a sentence uh, uh, correct, right? And uh, in other words, uh, in terms of gene regulation, uh, it, I mean, it happens that we have a set of I mean, bacteria or whatever, or any organism has set of, Oh, I lost the mic. Okay, um, a set of um, of um, genes that code for regulatory proteins at a set of of DNA binding sites are rec specifically recognized by those by those proteins, and these are in fact um, sort of long-term uh, dependency relationships that happen to be. I mean, there are some examples, clear examples of people that have done mutations, so that if you uh, modify the uh, regulatory protein, the DNA binding domain, uh, the, you, you will lose the interaction unless there is a corresponding uh, uh, mutation that enables the new recognition of these two um, different uh, modified uh, genetic elements. And given the relative freedom of position of, of each of these elements, uh, this enables you to, as I was saying, to get into a, in, into a complex structure that uh, gives the mathematical proof that yeah, simple grammars are inadequate to describe uh, these uh, systems. So that was 91 or so. And at the same time, of course, I needed to get into a large amount of data. And I went, I mean, very good amount of my postdoc at MIT was to go to the library and get there all as many papers of, uh, of well-described uh, um, Promoters for, for uh, people have already characterized the, the binding sites, the regulatory mechanisms. So what you see here in this, I mean, a schematic graph is the, the, the all different, um, I mean, different uh, each line represents a gene or in fact a promoter region. The plus one is the initiation of transcription, and you have the relative location of binding activator and repressor sites. And by 1991, there were, I mean, I was able to gather around the a little bit more than a hundred. Uh, different promoters with all these uh, different uh, organization of multiple sites, some of them uh, as complex as, as, as we know of uh, uh, multiple proteins, some of them that have to interact together to enable activation or repression of uh, mostly all these are sigma-70 type of promoters in uh, E. coli. So that was the, uh, the corpus of data that uh, was then uh, used so as you can see, in fact, I mean, the, with this uh, account, I mean, the origin of Regulon is, was very much sort of theoretically motivated uh, by uh, the, 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 the goal of, uh, of, of having, asking the question whether once you have a collection, which is very much a genomic type of a question, when you have a collection of whatever genes or uh, of an organism, in this case of, of different mechanisms, uh, whether uh, they will make, a, 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 I mean, is is this going to be just um, a collection that we can, and we make sense of the different properties. So a clear cut, uh, interesting uh, pro uh, property, distinguishing property between the Sigma 54 uh, uh, reduced data set of, of promoters is that you can have like, uh, like, uh, uh, like the, this one here, uh, the, uh, the NIF uh, uh, promoter, you can have uh, activation by at remote distances. And in fact, experimentally, they, you can, you know, move the binding site 1 kb or even 2 kbs and still retain around 20% of whatever of the activity of activation, something that is far from happening in the sigma 70 promoters. So as I was saying, I mean, I use this, uh, in fact, uh, review as uh, an exercise of asking whether there are universals of, of regulation in bacteria or it, was it just some collection of different, you know, objects that you cannot make sense out of all of them. Happened to be uh, the case that, as I said, I mean, the different properties that we, dis we found I mean, the, the uh, necessity of a proximal site in Sigma 70 promoters, the, uh, 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 the inability of Sigma 70 to make a stable closed complex and other properties, all of them somehow explain each other and the whole thing more or less makes uh, there's a rationale to, to, to understand the different behavior of, of, of uh, mechanisms of, of gene regulation available for uh, bacteria. And Sort of the same knowledge now represented in a different way is just what happened. Uh, is just the the, the uh, grammatical model that I uh, proposed uh, years ago, where you have the notion of of some proximal obligatory sites next. I mean, near the promoter, either repressors or activators, and then some space for for remote uh, <coughs> positions 
but there's no way you can, uh, I mean, and the, uh, anyway, uh, this uh, um, uh, model uh, was uh, later on the basis for uh, a, a, a syntactic recognition that we uh, implemented with uh, David Rosenbluth and, uh, and other colleagues on, and that generate a linear combination of many, many uh, possibilities of, of relative location of, of uh, activators and depressors. And at the end, the way it works is just sort of a filtering uh, of available positions of the different <coughs> uh, mechanisms. Uh, diminishing enormously the, no the number of false positives. Of course, by then, uh, we didn't have a method to predict promoters, so this could not yet be expanded to you know, whole genome uh, analysis. But anyway, the basic idea was, was, uh, was uh, sort of completed and the circle between theory and ideas and, and uh, specific uh, computational implementations. By 97, I <coughs> uh, collaborated with uh, Fred Blander in, uh, into uh, in fact, predicting, getting into prediction of promoters and operons and binding sites for, for the collection of regulators that we had in, uh, uh, been gathering for, for years. And, uh, and some of these descriptions, in fact, include precisely the, uh, the, the, the set of known and predicted operons, as you can see here, right? As well as uh, uh, regulatory elements, promoters, and binding sites in the genome. So. This is one of the, one of the unique genomes that contain all this type of of uh, additional uh, annotation in the organization of uh, of genes and, and their regulatory elements. So, as I was saying, this seed of of uh, initial collection was ninety one, which is, that is something like fifteen years ago. And but the first paper of the Regulon, in fact, relational database and so on, available to the public was much later in ninety eight uh, with. Uh, uh, yeah, Araceli, and in fact, Donitia Free, who is here also, was then uh, also, you know, uh, uh, spending time in, in my lab and, uh, and participating in all this uh, period of exciting uh, research. So, uh, of course, you know, this is sort of the core of, of, of what we do, but we also uh, are very much interested in trying to, I mean, the initial motivation was not really very much the one of service to the community, but to get into uh, understanding and gathering the data for our, our own purposes of, of research. So, in fact, it's a combination, and when I'm going from here on, more or less you will see sort of different uh, uh, methods and questions and observations related to all this uh, a, a collection of, of knowledge. So, what you see here is maybe my only uh, contribution a little bit to the, to, the, to, the, to protein stuff, protein structure. What you see here is in a scale that is uh, normalized to 100%. So, here you have the Amino terminus of a protein and the C and the and the and the uh, C terminus of a protein. Um, you have the observe. It's a graphical description that of what Ernesto Perez Rueda observed of you know when you see regulatory proteins, DNA binding regulatory proteins that have HTH domains. Uh, the HTH domains tend to be strongly localized on the extreme of the proteins, either on the amino or on the C terminus. But I mean, which makes sense because this is a domain that has to interact with uh, with something external to the. Uh, no, it's not internal of the of the global uh, 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 proteins. But not only that, the most interesting thing is that there is a clear tendency of activators to, to, uh, uh, be to, have, to, to, uh, to have the HTH domain in one of the extremes, as you can see here in, 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 in yellow, whereas repressors have uh, the HTH domain in the other extreme of the protein. And the only uh, I mean, explanations that we have is not really functional, because in fact, you can't have the other extreme. I mean, uh, this is just a tendency, and a tendency that comes out of from evolutionary uh, accidental uh, 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 origin of, of, regula of regulators. Um, years later, although we published in '87 all this set of operon predictions, the method was not really, you know, uh, I mean, we kept, we kept working on that, and we established a, a much simpler way of uh, of uh, predicting operons that was that is based on. So it's really a, a genomic method in the sense that it, it doesn't take into at all any information of orthology or, uh, con or, or gene content or anything about the, the proteins themselves or the, 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 the genes. Uh, we sort of, you know, cut a, a, a genome, the E. coli genome, into what, what we call directons. Directon, that is to say a group of a region where all genes are uh, transcribed in the same direction, right? Then uh, we, sort of, we sort of separate what is known as described operons in the 
in the database and uh, um, and we uh, just was very simple just to look into the intergenic distances between genes that belong to the same operon versus inter, uh, uh, intergenic distances of genes in the same direct in the same direction of transcription but however uh, that are supposed to belong to different transcription units and in a way that is sort of not usual of as uh, uh, to happen in biology I mean the distribution of positions is so really clear cut where you have a a, a, a high tendency of genes that belong to the same operon to be at close locations, which makes a lot of sense, versus a flat distribution in, uh, of positions, of, of distances uh, when uh, two, uh, in the, at the boundaries of transcription units. So this, this uh, observation was the, is the basis of, 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 as I was saying, of a method to predict operons with quite, quite uh, good accuracy. And then we went, went into with the Kenta a database in Bacillus um, to evaluate again uh, very much the same idea with a high 80% or so of uh, of, acu of performance of the method and and later on of course uh, somehow as as uh, Amos said I mean we, our point of start is always E. coli but then we get into expanding the type of observations and methods to other uh, bacteria we are not unfortunately I mean being actively annotating. Uh, regulation uh, from the literature of other uh, bugs, other uh, bacteria, but anyway. Uh, promoter prediction. So sigma-70 promoter prediction, which sounds to be like sort of classical, I think something that is already uh, solved. Um, the observation is when you generate the weight matrix uh, with the a known set of minus 10 and minus 35 uh, boxes, um, the, the highly scored uh, or sort of predicted uh, by, uh, by any sites uh, I mean, f uh, match with the known sites only in around half of the of the cases. So, 50% of the cases you have you have a, 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 a highly scored computational prediction that is different from the one that's been experimentally mapped. So, that's really something of a you know low quality of prediction. After I mean, to make a story a long story short, um, the, the 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 way uh, we implemented the method was to uh, observe that. I mean, we made we uh, observe that the the set of predictions of computational predictions you sort of get at a first level of low threshold, you know, a, a collection of of, of uh, motifs per something like thirty different uh, putative or promoter-like uh, binary sites, right, within a region of two hundred and fifty base pairs of stream of stream of genes. And this is uh, this uh, what you see here is that this. Uh, High density of, of overlapping promoter like sequences are precisely localized within the upstream regions of in a genome. And if you go to look into, you know, intergen um, um, intergenic regions or coding regions, the, the, the frequency is much, much lower. So this distinction, you know, this uh, huge distinction of high frequency of those regions, of those uh, putative uh, promoters occur precisely within the optimal regions of promoters, whether they are vestiges of evolution or whether they are, you know, contributing in a, in a, mechan in a, in a more complicated mechanism to attract the RNA polymerase to a collection of apparently low affinity binding sites that are lo closely located uh, versus one unique site. Uh, um, the point is that this is something that is clearly part of the, uh, the way, uh, you know, evolution and, and, and function uh, has encoded promote sigma-70 promoters in, in E. coli. And again, we've, we've tested these type of, of things in, in different collections of, of uh, genomes. And sometimes this, uh, this observation of, that I was saying of the uh, accumulated density within the upstream regions where promoters are expected to be versus the other regions in the genome is sort of the, the, uh, 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 the diagnostic criteria that you can utilize to say whether how much we, you, you can, you know, uh, uh, make use of, of sequences in E. coli to, to make some predictions in other uh, genomes. Uh, 98, I think, or 98, 99 was when we started uh, collaborating with, uh, with Peter Karp and to share our, you know, uh, uh, curation uh, uh, database with, uh, within Ecosite. And since then, we, we've kept collaborating and, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, contributing to the, the regulatory aspects of uh, within ecocide. This is a 
historical you know, summary of, of the increase of, of uh, uh, slow but steady increase of, of uh, knowledge in Nikolai from the literature. You can see, for instance, somewhere the line of promoters. We started with 200, and right now we are close to 13, uh, I mean, more than 1,000 uh, experimentally identified promoters. And of course, you have the corresponding uh, type of evidences, uh, I mean, precise mapping, or only footprinting, or only, or even sometimes just only uh, observe, uh, I mean, guesses from the from the biologists as to based on, on sequence of uh, conservation. And the same more or less happens for uh, operons and uh, transcription units and, and regulatory proteins. We also gather from the literature the conformation and the allosteric metabolite that binds to the different uh, regulators. And, uh, and we also started recently uh, gathering information from the, of, about the different conditions of, of, uh, of expression of the genes as well as in what seems to be a crazy decision to expand our curator efforts to go beyond transcription initiation. I say crazy because we have a limited, you know, as always, uh, number of people and curators, and, and, and we are not uh, yet up to uh, every day's uh, literature uh, available. This is a graphic representation of the network, which accounts more or less to about 20%, we, we assume, of the full, uh, based on different ways of counting, of the uh, total network in Nikolai. You see on the top in blue uh, the seven uh, uh, global regulators that we propose to be global regulators based on, on a set of different criteria as to the number of uh, genes they regulate and the number of regulators they also regulate. And then here you have all the, the layer of different uh, transcriptional regulators and, and in a barely visible and distinguishable way, the set of all, all the regulated genes. Oh. Okay, so uh, version five, Point zero of Regulon that was just released uh, this last January, we are, uh, you know, combining and uh, enabling this network. You can see sort of also graphic, uh, textually navigation by, give, you are sitting on a, on a page of one particular uh, Regulon, um, which is a complex Regulon, the way I, I, I we define it, it, and then you can also get into the set of all co-regulators, that is to say, RSC can also work with all these different transcriptional regulators, which is a textual and uh, navigation capability of going around the, the structure of the network, per se. <clears throat> and uh, we also have, you know, all the predict predictions available, and people can download, download them uh, uh, from either Regulon or from uh, Ecosite. Uh, more recently, we just we have, you know, classified the, the the regulators based on the origin of the metabolites of the allosteric interaction. So either you have Regulators that whose uh, allosteric metabolite is 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 something that is being incorporated from the outside of the cell, or is chemically synthesized by the cell by there's an enzyme that that synthesizes cyclic cyclic AMP, for instance, or uh, or or both can happen. So you have hybrid internal or external uh, regulators, and uh, and something interesting is that as you uh, uh, the internal regulators are the ones that really sort of dominate regulation of the hybrid or the external ones. There's no single external regulator in this definition that regulates an internal one. So, um, I mean, also should say that the global regulators are by far, six out of the seven are in fact internal regulators. So all these, uh, they are very much responsible for the most, most of the interactions that, I mean, re internal regulators regulating the other ones. And Seen, I mean, uh, recently we have, in collaboration with, uh, uh, in fact, uh, under the responsibility of Enrique Moret, a colleague at Institute of Biotechnology at UNAM in Cuernavaca, who's in fact here with, with us, uh, the, uh, the, the goal of not only gathering data from the literature, but exper experimentally mapping eventually as many or eventually all possible promoters from, uh, the, from E. coli. So Magallanes is not, is not something that is an international collaboration, but it's the idea of a global, in terms of covering eventually the whole set of, the whole genome uh, with a, a relative high throughput method of uh, promoter mapping of, uh, uh, of as many uh, promoters that are not known, uh, not described in the Ulona. And so we have uh, uh, now on the order, I was saying, can on the order of, I mean, more than 100, that is to say more than 10% of the total data set that's been accumulated through whatever, 20, 30 years uh, in this project, uh, 145 new uh, trans uh, experimentally mapped promoters. Finally, uh, you know, 
I think the first time I met, or uh, I mean, it was an important meeting in fact in Geneva uh, with Ana Teresa and we, Vasconcelos, and we initiated a collaboration that is that is uh, you know Cuba, uh, Cuba, Brazil, and Mexico uh, of a, 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 a database of uh, a closely related uh, you know uh, gamma protobacteria closely related to E. coli into not literature based but uh, you know computational predictions and, and in a very interesting methodology that combines orthology, I mean, uh, binding site conservation as well as operon structure that enables us to, to, to go beyond E. coli into other genomes, uh, uh, regulatory network. This is the, the group, and also, uh, I mean, it's uh, uh, of, of, uh, of my lab at UNAM. We were the center of nitrogen fixation, and a little bit more than a year ago, we changed it. We became the center of genomics at UNAM. And the people that are not in the picture but uh, have contributed to what I've, you know, uh, Described are Araceli Huerta, Ernesto Pérez Rueda, David Rosenbluth. I mean, Araceli and Ernesto were students in my lab. David is a, a comput computer scientist. Uh, Denis Kiefe, who you know, and he's also here. Gabriel Moreno, who's now in Canada, and Enrique Moreta as a collaborator. Um, so uh, thank you very much. This is a, a picture of uh, when Ana Teresa invited us to a beautiful time for the carnival in in Rio, I mean, this is not the best to see in the carnival, but anyway, I didn't have a, a picture. And uh, thank you very much. I just want to finish with what, you know, I sort of tell my students of the, 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 the work in genomics and bioinformatics where the, the, uh, we, have, we are sort of a collection of diverse people and, and where collaboration is essential. Thank you. Okay, so do we have any questions for Julio or Coffee? Okay, just one quick question. Um, you're mapping the transcription initiation sites using RACE. Uh, have you also thought about mapping transcription back to binding sites uh, to complement that with, say, chromatin IP and a genomic microarray? Yes, yes, we are, I mean, putting our hands a little bit into that, and, uh, but... Uh, it's just very preliminary, yeah, the chip-chip experiments, and yes, that would be nice. Yeah. Okay, thanks again to Julio, and uh, coffee break now.